We live in a world full of barriers and frontiers. Countries, states, religions, ethnicities. We are used to thinking in terms of us and them. Imagine a world without these barriers, sin fronteras, where we embrace our humanity and acknowledge every human being as our sibling. Wouldn't that drastic, drastically improve this world? Wouldn't that alleviate the suffering of billions of people across our planet and the constant cycle of hate and war and bring peace to the world? How could we achieve it? Several things define our humanity, our bodies, languages, self-awareness, abstract thinking. However, there is something I believe which unites us even more strongly, something that has amazed us, our parents, and the parents before them for thousands of generations in the East, West, North, and South. Across time and space, countries and cultures, the profound appreciation of the night sky. When we watch the night sky and we see thousands of stars shining in the darkness, there is something inside us that resonates, that awakens. This experience is sublime and it touches deep inside us. Why? Quoting the great astronomer Carl Sagan, the cosmos is also within us. We are made of star stuff. We are a way for the cosmos to know itself. This is not just like an astronomy poetry. We are really made from the atoms producing the stars in the universe billions of years ago. Some of these elements, like hydrogen, come from the beginning of time, the Big Bang. Others, like iron, are producing supernovae, dying exploding stars, which is precisely the topic of my research as an astronomy PhD candidate at University of California, Santa Cruz. Whoop. Bananas. <laughs> I, I study the mysterious dark energy through these exploding stars. However, I also enjoy thinking on how the universe connects us all to the elements in our bodies, in our planet, or through the shared admiration of the night sky. I come from the lush mountains of Costa Rica, a small country in Central America. We have no army, so I grew up in environments of peace and harmony, picking wild berries with my family. As a tropical country, we get a lot of rain, but we also have clear, peaceful nights. During those, I like to gaze at the night sky, wondering which distant soul was also contemplating the same stars. This is, this is a simple yet profound reminder of our shared humanity and the universal beauty that bounds us together. It is wonderful to appreciate how, regardless of time and location, humans have had different interpretations of the night sky. Consider the constellations. Across different cultures, the same groups of stars have inspired diverse legends and myths. For example, Betelgeuse, the red star we know as part of Orion, is also a part of a constellation in at least 16 other cultures, ranging from Navajo to Egyptian, Inuit to Hindu, each with its own mythology. Even fictionalized worlds have their own sky dwelling legends. For the elves or of J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, Venus, the third brightest celestial object under, uh, after the sun and moon, is a Silmaril, a jewel shining upon the brow of Erendil, who flies upon a magical ship, giving hope to elves and humans. The tale of Erendil resonated deeply with me. Since I first read it 20 years ago, Every time I see Venus blazing the night sky, I am filled with hope of a better future, of a better world. It's a feeling so intense, I decided to make it a part of me. 
a design by Tolkien himself of Venus shining against the twilight. This universal attraction from the night sky not only highlights our sheer curiosity, but also shows a deeper connection to the cosmos, a connection that can be traced back thousands of years, manifesting itself in the very languages we speak. For example, in Chinese, the, sky, the word for sky or heaven is Tian. This character is formed by two components or radicals, one and great. In the eyes of the ancient Chinese, the sky possibly meant one big thing, one singular entity which unites us all. Or the, way, or, or the word for sky in Spanish, cielo, comes from Latin kylum, which possibly comes from an Indo-European root, the same language family as Greek, Sanskrit, and many others, meaning whole. This idea of a shared sky has been important in the history of humankind. Why not use this concept to unite us all under the same banner? Seek peace and make us comprehend we're all in this together. I am convinced astronomy education has the potential to foster a sense of kindness and, and compassion, build bridges between our different cultures, and bring peace to our conflicted worlds. We can help each other understand we are all siblings, regardless of country, ethnicity, or religion. We are boundless drops in a boundless universe. I encourage everyone to attend astronomy outreach activities in your community, no matter where you are in the world. An organization called the International Astronomical Union, similar to the United Nations before astronomy, has an office dedicated entirely to outreach, aiming to make astronomy accessible to all. On clear nights, you could attend telescope viewing activities to observe the stars, the planets, and the moon as you've never seen them before. Sometimes, our city lights or cloudy weather makes it hard to see the stars. However, there are other options. You could attend a planetarium show, a movie theater for the sky, where simulated stars are projected onto a dome ceiling, a wonderful immersive learning experience. You could visit astronomical observatories or science museums, or use free computer software such as Celestia or Stellarium to explore the universe from your own laptop. But above all, I heartily recommend everyone to go outside and enjoy the night sky. Through time, it has inspired music, paintings, architecture. It has also acted as a shared compass, helping us find our center and navigate to our destinations. I warmly invite you to enjoy its beauty, thinking everyone on this planet shares the same sky. Think of loved ones far away, like I do. We are all connected. We share the same sky. We are made of stardust. We share a celestial bond. I would like to finish with a beautiful quote from Roman Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius, written 2,000 years ago, but which remains valid to this very day. Dwell upon the beauty of life. Watch the stars and see yourself running with them. Muchas gracias.